I'll be honest, I should probably be playing a different game for the sake of what I'm trying to ha have on the channel on a regular basis, but you know what? I really want to play this game, so I really am good. You know what? I'm going to play it. Also, real quick, I want to check something. Okay, here's the sensory touch. So, how exactly does it work? Doesn't really transfer much, does it? Hmm. Would have expected it to transfer a bit more, not just two hit points. Maybe it'll get more powerful over time? Hard to say. Either way, now that I have my objective, I need to find someone who can tell me a little bit about the gate. So I wrote down a little bit, and... Hmm. I'm trying to remember exactly what was said, but... Let me see if I can find my notes. Aha! Why is my scratch paper over here? Okay, so... Place of Forge and Steel. So, I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I'm sure I can figure out easily enough. So my goal is to find the person who can tell me more about what's going on, and what that key might be, as well as all that fun stuff. So there are a couple- as for the place, there are a couple of ideas I have. Firstly, where- whatever foundry I need to find, which I did some looking to see and accidentally stumbled upon something else, which I'll probably explore later. So, I need- it's either the forge, or the siege tower. So let's start by looking for the key. This older man is chewing on something, muttering something to himself. After a moment, there is a crack as he crunches down on the object in his mouth, then swallows it. His bushy, brassy white eyebrows furrow for a moment, rise, and then furrow again. Hmm. Greetings. Without so much as looking at you, the man reaches into his tunic, pulls out a puce-colored ball, regards it curiously for a moment, then pops it into his mouth. I said greetings. The man frowns and waves you away, then nods to himself thoughtfully as he savors the flavor of whatever he's put into his mouth. Let's be persistent. The man smirks, bites his thumb at you, then abruptly pauses. His cheeks swell, and with a violent gag, he spits up a large black fly, which begins to buzz around the chamber. Minus! Minoroxi and candies be damned! He cries, shaking his fist at the insect. He whirls on you. What? What do you know of Ravel Puzzlewell? He pops a small red candy into his mouth. Do you always traipse about molesting prusent mages with your ignorant prattle? Babbling, brout, blathering, chittering, chattering! The candy shoots from his mouth on chattering, flying in a high arc to land on the floor with a wet flip. He stares at it sadly. I'm, uh, sorry about your candy. It was so tasty, too, he mules. He suddenly looks up, snarling. Sorry? As you should be, you piking dung beetle. Mages deserve respect, and bashers like you should know their proper place. He begins to jump up and down. Proper place! Proper place! Calm down, I only mean to ask you some questions. I care not, you yeasty, beef-witted pignut! Uh, pignut? What the hell? His eyes bulge out as he jabs his finger at you. Now off with you! Off with you! And do not return without being prepared to show the proper respect! Come bearing tribute! A gift! He suddenly draws close and whispers from the side of his mouth. And these are chocolate would be nice, but nothing common, mind you. Bring something exotic. Now be gone! Fine. Look around the ward for something suitable, then. Updated my journal. Why do I get the feeling you're the one I need to talk to, and why do I get the feeling that I really don't want to talk with you? Ugh, oh, that's gonna be obnoxious. Well, since I'm back here, I might as well see to the other stuff here. The inscription around the base of this sensory stone indicates that it holds the experience. Week-long hunting trek across the forest of Arborea. Arborea was that neutral or chaotic good place, wasn't it? Pretty sure. You're standing in a circle of white tents, deep in the woods somewhere. The trees around you are by far the largest you've ever seen. Suddenly, though, there's an odd prickling sensation at the back of your skull. Your surroundings melt into a colorless smear, then slowly resolve into what looks like the interior of a large gray sphere. Across from you stands a figure almost identical to yourself. His eyes flash in the half-darkness. A mad smile splits his features. I knew you would come. Greetings. Oh, greetings, greetings. So good to see you. He sneers. I bid your murderous tongue to be silent. That's right, murderous. Your pretend innocence is laughable. Who are you? Oh, don't you know? Didn't all those filthy, lying, trispidam journals tell you who I am? Those journals that were so conveniently left for me when I awoke. Those journals that called me an incarnation. Ha! Burned them all, I did. All that I found. What did they say, exactly? 
They spoke lies, 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 and nothing more. Filth about a man who forgets himself, other incarnations of preserving their experience in writing so later lives can benefit. Thieves! It's my life. Mine. You want all... You all want to steal my body, and you won't have it. So you're one of my earlier incarnations? He crosses his arms and looks away. If you'd put stock in such trash, yes. What did those lying journals say? Where am I? Oh, this? He gestures around him, him, snickering. Just a little trap is all. I realize that killing your body thieves might not be enough. I might have to trap you and snare you for eternity. You may have realized by now that there's no way out of this sensory stone. Your mind is locked here. You'll notice the rather sparse surroundings I've left for you. All to help the madness set in good and quick while your flesh rots away. You try and escape the experience, but nothing comes of it. Your earlier incarnation doubles over with mocking laughter. Surrender! You'll never escape. You may as well lay down and wait to fade away to nothing. I am the only one who can release you, and that I will not do. I have some questions for you then. Your early in incarnation crosses his arm and looks away indignantly. Save for a few more tufts of hair on his head, he's identical to you. Even his arms have most of the tattoos yours do. How did you make this trap? Can't tell you that. It'll never be replicated. The magic juice in its creation were lost, even to me. Clever it is, though. One experience hidden beneath the other, so that no flesh but my own would set it off. So there are actually two sensations within this stone? Yes, that of the Arborean hunting trip and that of this trap. He looks suddenly wary of you. Why? Let's see if this works. You try and escape the experience, but nothing comes of it. Okay, so I see where we're going with this. Did you put those tattoos on? No! He looks distraught. That one incarnation, that practical one did. I've tried to burn them off, but the skin regenerates with the tattoos still on them. I've tried to tear them off, stain them with acid. I hate them! But why? His eyes flicker uncomfortably. It is maddening to feel the eyes upon you, reading your body like a book. His eyes grow wild. Stop that! Stop reading me! He tries to cover himself with his arms, turning away from you. The figure's eyes grow even wilder. Stop! Stop now! I'm warning you! He turns away from huddling up to cover more of his body. You see on his back the list of tattoos war uh, warnings that Morty once read to you at the mortuary. There is, however, one line at the bottom that Morty had neglected to read aloud. Don't trust the skull. Your previous incarnation grows more and more frantic as you keep peering at it. I warn you for the last time! Stop! You can't threaten me. You're a recorded memory, an apparition. I'll just keep reading them until you let me out of here. He howls like a madman, thrashing wildly, clawing at his arms and frothing at the mouth. Out! 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 And like that, everything ends. You find yourself standing in the sensorium once more, slightly befuddled, but quite unharmed. I wonder if that's the same one... I must rest. Yeah, shut up, Dakon. I wonder if that's the same person who enslaved Takon. I don't know. Let's see what this last one has to say. The base of this aquatic blue stone has been sculpted so it appears to have melted into the pedestal it rests upon. A stream of perfect azure tears drip down the sides, framing the inscription beneath the pedestal. Longing. As you place your hands upon the stone, its surface ripples beneath your touch. A chill washes over your arm like plunging your hands into a mountain stream. As you close your eyes, you blink and reopen them. Your eyes are brimming with tears, and you are overcome with the terrible sensation of drowning. As the sensation rolls through you, there is a stirring in your breast, a hunger, poisonous like a serpent, biting into your heart until you feel as if your breast will explode. You want desperately to steady yourself, focus, but all that comes to your eye is tears. You raise your hand to wipe away your tears. Your hands are soft, delicate woman's hands. They brush the stray tears from your cheek and you cup them into your hands, each one of the tears like jewels shimmering in the lights. That's an odd thing f way to phrase it. The lights are cast by candle globes that drift through your sanctuary. You have come to this place to gather your thoughts, to reflect on the past with an eye toward the future, to cleanse the mind before the coming journey. Yet, you cannot concentrate. Your thoughts remain in the present, trapped there by the terrible feeling that rides in your breast. What does he mean? 
You close your eyes, but his words echo in your mind. A hundred, a thousand times. Will he ever return? The sound is a whisper, and echo, only you. Only you. Yet you hesitated at the brink of time's door, and you must have thought you were afraid to go. But you are not. You are afraid to stay, and the fear, the serpent writhing, hides in your breast again, its fangs biting into your heart, filling it to bursting with its poison. The tears come again, running down your cheeks in streams, his words echoing. Your eyes snap open. It is his voice. You whirl and you gasp. He stands, powerful, in the shadows, and he strides into the light of the drifting candle globes, and you feel the serpent writhing and dying. He returned, his face stern but somewhere in those features. You can almost see his pleasure at seeing you. After all, he returned for- Only you can help me, Dianar, but it was wrong for me to ask you for your help. You speak, Dianar, yet you, it is you. Gray skin like a statue, striding from the light. Are you that scarred? Your body looks like it has been bathed in knife blades. The wounds, the tattoos, horrible. Yet you see through Dianara's eyes, and she sees. How can she see you in such a way? She puts a cloak over your features. She sees you in such a light, such terrible longing. Light, for she... How can she feel such? You feel your vision tearing doubling until you are that man striding from the light. It is you, but not you. You feel yourself being torn. It is Dianara's experience, but at the same time, it is also yours. And do you... what? I asked too much of you to accompany Dianara. I have no right to place you in such danger for my sake. It is your words, but they are a surgeon's words, chosen with cold skill, without a trace of emotion. With every word, you feel yourself sneering inside knowing what the stricken girl will see next through her longing, strained eyes. And who are... And who are you, that person, that man, twisting her with your words, not knowing how powerful they are to her, like bolts from a ballista, piercing her breast, her... Yet she sees only relief at your return. How, how can she feel and not know they mean to... I have come to ask you forgiveness, Dianara. I shall return to you as soon as I am able. Your vision tears again, doubling and bleeding until you are facing yourself again, trying desperately to speak, to warn Dianara that this is not a man, but a creature that kills for his own need. He doesn't care about you, Dianara. You are a tool to him, a tool he needs to... But Dianara speaks, and you can't stop her! I would place myself in a thousand dangers, embrace eternity for you, my love. I am not afraid. Listen to me. I will accompany you, though the plains themselves should bar. Though the planes themselves should bar the way. You feel yourself shattering, relief and satisfaction. His satisfaction at her words, knowing she would say them, always knowing. And her admission of love is like the slamming of a portcullis across your heart. Trapped. She is yours, but you must be certain, so you drive the nail home. The way is dangerous. You will have to be strong. Far stronger than you are now. Swimming through her mind, relief, the wave of relief, the end of longing, yet longing for him more in his words, not noticing his manipulations. All you need to be is strong, and his path shall be as one with yours. Your thoughts are like fires, for you can be strong, stronger than he knows. You know no fear. You would die for him. I can be strong, my love. I will. Her words slide off of him like water. The serpent in her breast, the one piercing her heart with its poisons, has been replaced by this serpent in the flesh. She sees nothing of this, and, her next, and his next words are planned carefully. So carefully. I can't say if we'll succeed, Dianara, but I'll do my best to protect you, and I will expect nothing less of the same from you. You. You may be required to make some sacrifices. At that final, terrible word, er, you feel yourself being torn apart. He means her harm. He means you harm, for if you are her, and he meant to hurt her, yet you need her to be harmed, and you want to scream, scream at her that she is in danger. Run! Run, Dianara, for his eyes unmake all things, and... Of course, my love. Life is sacrifice. This I have learned. You, she, her... You speak the words, and in it you feel yourself dying inside. You are a spectator, and you have watched a woman die, for the words are a death sentence. Yet still she speak still 
Yet still, still she speaks, unheeding, uncaring. I left a legacy in my father's keeping, my love. As for the sixth, the third, the K and the S, in it I bequeath everything to you. It's not much, but with it I left... Updated my journal. You, him, a wave of irritation washes, washes over you. You clench your teeth to prevent the irritation from crossing your features. Must she always continue to prattle even when you do not prompt her? Must she... No, no. Keep the irritation inside. Only a trace slips out. Come now. I cannot die, Dianara. There is no need for such foolishness. Her, you, she is overcome with fear. Fear that revolts you and the fear wells up inside her. You, you as you watch him frown and you hasten to correct him. He must know the reasons and know the wisdom behind them, so he is impressed with your planning. Speak! Speak before he turns away! I know I can often act foolishly, my love, but you said yourself that you can't forgive things if you are badly hurt. There are things in that legacy that could help you remember, should you forget yourself. Updated my journal. She, you, coldly regard her through your eyes, tracing your gaze along her furrowed brow, wrinkled with worry, desperation. She has acted as you expected. Yet there is something in what she says. Perhaps. Yet I hope nothing in this legacy is of value. I do not want you to leave any things here in some safe that could be of some use on our journey. Her illusion is shattered. Just for a moment. You watch, silent, as the emotion falls to the ground, splintering like silver glass. Of sudden use. Such a casual statement. Yet even Dianara sees. And you hope, just for a moment, you hope that she sees him for what he is. The serpent. The serpent! And your hope dies, as in Dianara's eyes. The emotion is rebuilt, the slivers being drawn from the ground, the illusion rebuilt, but the slight sliver of pain remains. He thinks you have done something foolish, yet you did it for him. You must, must make amends, but how? You must convince him the legacy is unimportant, but it isn't. It isn't. It's everything! The legacy, my love, it, it just has a few things to help you remember. The scythe of words falls on Dianara, so quick, so sharp, you cannot follow its arcing path. A legacy? The things you do, Dianara. Such romantic gestures. No matter. No! She! You! Dianara, you have driven him away again, like you did the night before. You feel the serpent stirring again, reborn, curling around your heart. There is the softest of hisses, yet he does not hear. What? Would you wish to leave a legacy, my love, for yourself, or for anyone you would want to? It might help you remember if you left something for yourself, or for the ones you loved. The word scythe falls again, terrible and swift, yet this time the illusion holds and the serpent is cloaked. The serpent is cunning, and it shall not reveal itself until it strikes. A legacy for myself? Not likely. The things I would leave for myself would not be safe in some advocate's office, Dianara. But enough of this. I must leave. He's leaving! You must make him remain. And the experience swirls around you. Terrible. The spiraling toward the final scene. The question you, she, wants to ask. Don't ask it, Dianara! Don't ask it! Be silent! Be silent! My love, before you go... His anger, his irritation... What now, girl? What now, you mewling banshee? Before I go, it looks like I am in no danger of that. Come, Dianara, can't these questions wait for the morn? There is much... She! You! She's desperate! Drowning! Say it! Say it! Say it! And she! You! Speak it! Do you want me to come with you, my love? The rush of emotion dies in your mind. This is the end. The words he, you, are about to speak are true. But the truth is not the truth she sees. There are no lies, only cold calculations. Of course he wants you to come with him, Dianara. You understand it clearly, too clearly. He has invested too much in the poor girl to let her go. Of course, Dianara. I would not have asked you to come with me if I did not want your company. You know how I feel about you. There is a cold silence in his mind, then a hissing of a thought. A response, sharp and deadly, like a dagger blade. The lie comes swiftly, unburdened by emotions. I love you, Dianara. And you want to scream as you feel the lie wash over her like a radiance! But it is a shadow of truth, a serpent's kiss, and he means you harm, and she can't see you want to call out, but she's crying with joy, even as, even as... The emotion washes over you, like you are drowning, drowning, and you need to speak, you long to speak, 
but you cannot. And... And you scream. Scream as you tear your hands from the stone, bloody tears rushing through your, um, your eyes, running in streams down your arms, your hands to coat the stone. Blood. Her blood. And you can't warn her. And you can't stop crying. Anna is watching you, terrified. She looks as if she, like she wants to step forward. Help, but she's paralyzed. Yeah? Are you all right? Yes. Yes. I just need a moment. Anna is silent, staring at you, hyp hypnotized. Your blood drips upon the floor, each tear splattering into a crimson circle as it strikes the flagstones in the sensorium. What did you see? What did you see in that fiend stone? Longing. Anna frowns, confused, then stares daggers at the sensory stone, as if she's thinking about shattering it. I? I'm longing to break the stone I am, to tear you up so. No, no, I just need a moment, Anna. I'll be fine. As much as you want to hurl the memory of the experience from you, you hold it fast, because you know it's important to remember. It was you in that experience. It was Dianara's experience. But because it was you, your memories flooded you, and you could feel both sides at once. Who were you? What was that... that shade of you? I feel stronger. Right. We need to say up kept now. Yeah, what the hell was that? <laughs> Holy... Jeez. That might be one of the few videos on this channel that I post to Facebook, because holy crap. That is just such good writing. Oh, mm, it's so good! <laughs> Alright, so now I've got another one of these to throw in. Eh, let's up my wisdom a little bit. Well, I don't know. I, From what I understand, it increases experience gain. And I hear that'll be important later on, so... I haven't seen- well, that's the problem with looking at this game. It's hard not to dissociate between what you hear online about it, because it's really hard to talk about this game without spoiling anything. Ah, it put me in the so Society of Sensations. And still neutral good, fair enough. Is there anything else to know? Yeah, not really. Okay, that was not at all what I expected, holy crap. Not. At. All. Okay, now, oh, where's the exit? Wow. Just... Every time I think this game can't throw any more insanity and awesomeness at me, it somehow does! I, I don't understand it! What is... <sighs> I don't get it. Well, let's go f do some more research on Ravel. I had some questions. We would be pleased to answer what questions we can, so long as they pertain to the Fest Hall or the Society of Sensations. Is there anyone here who might know about Ravel Puzzlewell? Splinter closes his eyes and thinks briefly. We would recommend you to speak to a wizard by the name of Quell about Ravel. Quell is always somewhere in the Fest Hall, most often in the private sensator sensorium. I'm gonna have to appease the guy? Please no. Please freaking no. Now, in the meantime... This, I kind of want to see what the public sensorium looks like. Just out of curiosity. I mean, I have a feeling I Dumb. should probably be exploring being more thorough, but you know what. Dumb. That I'll see too much here. I'm but... going. Okay, let's see how much it'll cost me. This is an unusual violet stone. It is securely fastened to the pedestal that it rests upon. Okay, so it looks like they're only going to let me All touch right. him if I'm willing to pay up. So, honestly, I probably will just try and move on and figure out how to appease the jerk. So, let's see. What exactly could I do? Hmm. Hmm. Oh the number for it. I wonder what that might mean. A rather eccentric mage by the name of Quell refuses to speak with me on the grounds that I haven't shown him the proper respect by giving him a gift. He suggested candies or chocolate, but that they could not be of the common sort. They must be exotic. I told him that I'd find s I told him that I'd find somewhere in the clerk's board that sold such things. Alright then. Yay for the journal being helpful. Let's take a look. Well, I think step one would be 
finding a place to rest. I'm pretty sure Splinter could help me with that. Okay, so... Yes, there are lodgings within the Fest Hall. Should you wish to visit them, walk eastward through the Fest Hall from here. You will eventually come to them. Speak to the room clerk there. Alright then, so... Head to the east? I presume I'm just gone. in here. Hmm, then this must be one of the lectures. We'll have to go investigating that later. Huh. Warrior in training. Now I'm curious. This person is practicing various combat maneuvers on a wooden training dummy. They seem far too busy to speak with you at the moment. Alright. Hmm. Alright then. Guess I'm not gonna get too much. Actually, you're just a commoner. Well, not commoner, but you get the point. Okay, thief in training. I wonder if this place can instruct me in how to be... Hmm. Can I become a mage here? Might not be the worst idea, given that I have a higher intelligence than strength right now. Done. Let's go talk to someone about that, actually. Maybe Splinter can help me for that. Let's go take a look. Hmm. Also, what's in here? Okay, more identify. Power word blind. Okay. The power of sight shall be removed and darkness shall enter. Interesting. Okay. So I presume that this is merely just a blind spell? Okay, blinds it to 100 hit points of creature. Okay, spreads outward from the center. Okay, so... A variety of different things. Let's see... I wonder... Hmm. Alright then, if... Thievery training chamber... Well, let's see if I can't find anything by going into here. Yep, it looks like that is a training room for Magi. Yeah, because I think that would be fun. I tend to enjoy the Mage archetype more so than others anyway. I just need to find whoever it is that runs the place. Which it looks like isn't even here. This rusted iron plate bolted to the wall is pitted, corroded, cracked, melted, and scorched in various places. Okay, where am I? Let's see if anyone here knows. And it looks like... This person is carrying a sheaf of papers and unwound scrolls. They occasionally pause to look through them and read portions of what's written aloud, practicing elaborate hand motions as they do so. They look up as you, you come to stand before them. Greetings. Greetings. What is this place? This is where aspiring mages can come to train and study. Many wizards took their... F their yeah. Many wizards took their... took their first step... All your base are belong to us. In a took their first steps in the yard as fledgling sorcerers here. Where's the trainer? Updated my journal. I do not where Lady Thorn Chrome is gone. I would suggest you try the sensoriums. She spends too much of her time there. It's perhaps too much. The sensoriums? Ask Splinter, just inside the Fest Hall's entrance of them. You cannot reach them yourself, but he will take you there. Lady Thorn Chrome. 